be lying. So everything y'all say, yeah. can will be used against you. Yeah. Oh, let's don't talk about anybody. That's right. Or not that you can't. We talk about Jesus and Paul and, and the Corinthians. We have shown them on the, the eating stuff lately. Oh, and, like, yeah. and the next one is about eating too. Oh, it's mm -hmm. about eating. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He said all the buffets that didn't eat that well. Y'all bear with me until we get the page here. Oh, here comes Greg. There he is. He didn't be here. Good morning. How are you this morning? Wonderful. How are you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. Doing, all right. doing, doing pretty good, though. Well. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to them that uh, might listen to it online or have it YouTube, whatever it is. And um, the Methodist men have a great meeting this morning. Well, good. Did they, uh, did they get any numbers on the barbecue? <clears throat> Do you know? Yeah, but if you won't hear, we don't shout. But now yeah, we'll, agree, I will tell you, it's enough. the best we've yeah. ever had. Best one. You said numbers, didn't you? Was it successful in other words? <laughs> we think it may be the most profitable that we ever had. Wow. wow. Well, I had one man to tell me this week. He says, it just wasn't enough barbecue on my plate. It didn't last me but two days. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been bound to told him we had sold over the two <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton did scoop it up on that. Yeah, that was Carlton's fault. Yeah, so Carlton's fault. ain't nobody here with that fault. But they that. all talked about how good it was and how much it was. Well, I've had that. more compliments than I've ever had delivering barbecue. Well, uh, and they're still telling me that. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was in the community was just glad that we had it again. Mm -hmm. Get somebody something different to eat. But um, we've always got two meals a piece out of the place. I never understood. I've always carried some of all the ladies that I work with in the laboratory up at the hospital and used to work with, um, they'll eat that whole plate up in one city. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how they do it. If I do that, I go to sleep. For sure. Well, anyway, we're going to talk, we're talking about eating, we're going to talk some more about eating. And uh, in this lesson, communion connections and <coughs> It says the purpose is to understand how taking the Lord's Supper can produce a powerful experience of unity within a diverse congregation. And you know, we don't really have that diverse a congregation here. Everybody here kind of knows everybody for the most part. So, you know, we don't we don't have the problems that some of the bigger churches may have. And anyway, in this uh Passage of scripture in First Corinthians song. Um, it's in chapter eleven of First Corinthians. Paul is uh, fussing at the people in Corinth. And uh, you know, he had a lot of trouble with that church. And I think it's because Corinth was a um if I knew what it was, I'd tell you, but I don't forget where it's at. But it was in the Roman Empire, and it was a predominantly Roman town. Um, it was a very rich town because of trading, and business, commerce, that kind of stuff. And um, most of the people in this church group in Corinth, in this Christian group, most of them were wealthy. And of course, they had some poor ones. They had slaves and former slaves, too. And the, what Paul was fussing out about, when they had um, their communion, and the early churches apparently um, 
pretty much celebrated communion every time they got together. And I they, didn't quite understand that. Um, I don't know. Maybe because it was new to them. But I think part of it was they didn't have, you know, a church building like we have. They mostly met in some of the more bigger houses, the more wealthier people, because they didn't have the church building, they didn't have community houses and places like that, really. Um, and I think they mostly met in some of the more wealthy people's houses. And I think that maybe they felt like the communion meal should be part of every time they met. Um, and anyway, what it seems like they was doing was some of them would just go ahead and, and eat and drink all the wine they could hold and they were kind of separated to the self. You know, if you have a big um, meal together, and you know, like when we have you know, church-wide meals. A lot of times you got people that's going to always sit together. And uh, it's because they really like each other. And they like to sit there and talk while they eat. Well, these people, the the more wealthy ones apparently were, and the more important ones, I guess, was sitting together and they wouldn't even wait for the uh, for the lesser people to even get there before they would eat. And, and they kind of just ignored them. And it says in the lesson that most of the people brought their own food in, of course, that the more you had, the more you could bring. And so there were some that came and didn't have a whole lot. Um, and apparently, Paul feels like they were not sharing and getting together and having this meal to, uh, together as a one group instead of some separate groups. Um, because you probably had the, the big wheels all sitting together in one room and they put everybody else in somewhere else out on the porch to eat something. You know, I know when we was growing up and we'd have Thanksgiving or Christmas meal, the grown-ups would sit at the big table and us young ones, we'd have to sit out on the porch at the little table, the card table or something. And uh, it used to make me so mad that they wouldn't let us sit at the, uh, the big table. And then, when I got older and we had more younger people in the family, I would I got tired of sitting at the big table, and I could sit at the little table with the young ones so we could laugh and carry on. And, uh, but anyway, apparently they they put some people out on the porch. And Paul says, y'all are acting like these people ain't good enough for you. And he said, what you doing if you're you're calling this communion. You know, and Paul talks about the tradition that he was given from the original disciples about the Last Supper and the communion where we share in the bread and the wine or grape juice, what we use here. And how that is supposed to be a symbol of all of us accepting Christ into us. You know, it's not about drinking his blood and eating his flesh, that kind of thing. That's um, it's symbolism. It's we take Christ into us and we are, it's supposed to bring us all together as one. If we're all part of Christ, then we should all be kind of together instead of pushed apart. And Paul said, if y'all the way y'all are doing it, he said, it's worse than not doing it at all. He said, you're dishonoring Jesus because we're celebrating his life and his sacrifice for us until he comes back and we can have that heavenly banquet with him that we all you know, look forward to when he comes back and the world is, is made over. Um, Paul says, what y'all are doing it's almost like heresy. He said, you're, you're doing the opposite of what Christ wanted you to do. Christ wanted everyone to be together as Christians, and y'all are being separate. And 
so Paul says, if you're going, you know, if you're going to do like that, he said, um, he said, I can't compliment you on nothing. He said, I can only criticize you. He's pretty wrong. And uh, this church in Corinth, apparently it was a big group. And like I say, it was a, a diverse group. You had a lot of merchants and well-to-do people. You had your poor people and your slaves and whatnot and your servants. And Paul said, if y'all done like you're supposed to, the ones who are well off would give some of their plenty to the ones that didn't have much, and you would even you would wait for them to, and I'll take this meal together. You would even serve them to show that you don't hold yourself above them. He said that's what Christ came to earth to teach us. He said y'all just ignoring it, and he said, um, you know. What's going to happen? God is going to judge you for doing this. He said, you'd better be better off if you would judge yourself a little bit and admit that you're not perfect. Admit that you ain't no better than nobody else. And then God will accept your asking for forgiveness and you'll be better off. So, um, you know, again, we got a church community here that um, most everybody knows everybody else. Um, so we don't have too much trouble like this that they have. When we, when we get together, we all together. And, um, but we do know in the past that we've had visitors come to this church and felt like they won't, was in nowhere. Um, I hope that's not the case anymore, um, or less the case than it was. And that's something that's, you know, it's human nature to stick to people that you know. Um, if you go to a, where there's a big crowd of people, if you see somebody you know, well, you're going to probably, you know, kind of sort of hang together a little bit. That's just human nature. But Paul is saying that when, you take in this communion. He said, you can't. He said, you've got to look at it like this was part of, like it's rehearsing for that heavenly banquet that he talks about. And that they talk about, you know, in our communion ritual, in the hymnal, it has words in there to the effect that we're doing this as one to prepare ourselves for that heavenly banquet they call it and of course you know the, the Bible tells us when Christ comes back and the world is made over then we can all sit down together and uh, have all we want to eat it talks about that heavenly banquet um, that's what we're kind of preparing for is to be included in that um, Paul is telling us, for instance, that uh, y'all is ignoring and rejecting some of the people. He said, Christ is going to reject y'all when he comes back because y'all ain't doing it right. Um, so, you know, I guess, you know, Paul founded this church. And so I guess it bothered him even more when he saw them not doing like they were supposed to do. And I'm sure that some of the Bigger churches, some of the churches in communities in cities like where the population is a lot more diverse than we are, they may have more of this problem than we do. Um, and I think every church more or less just does communion once a month for a special time. We don't do it every time we meet like these people used to. Um, but I think it goes... The, the being welcoming, the want to include everyone, I think it goes a lot further than just communion. Um, you know, our communion service is kind of a ritual and you don't really, we don't do things like go out and carry communion to, to guests and new people to show them that we want to serve them. Um, it's just, I've never known it to be done that way. Um, 
but I'm sure in a in a bigger, more varied church population, you have people who feel like they're not included. Um, well, we do include everyone when we take communion. It's open to everyone. Right. Well, I remember in years past, I don't think it used to be that open. I don't think it was either. It and was not mentioned anyway, but now it's, you know, yeah. we always say it's open to everyone. And some denominations do not open it that's, to other denominations. That's true, and I don't know what all of them are. I know the Catholic Church, you cannot take communion if you're not a Catholic. Um, also, according to the news this week, if you have certain moral rights, if you don't believe in this kind of thing, you're not allowed to take communion. That's right. I hadn't heard that, but I... No, no if you... I hadn't heard it, but I believe it. If you believe in abortion, you are not to mm -hmm. take communion in the Catholic if you're Church. Not, if you're not uh, Catholic, or if you don't worship, or you, they don't want you... If, you're, if you don't feel worthy, you don't take uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. But how, who are we to judge who is worthy? Yeah. That's when you judge yourself. Yeah. yeah, if we judge ourselves honestly, and we find out that probably none of us is really No, we lie to ourselves. Um, <laughs> I, you know, that, I, that's not bad. I don't, you know. Oh, we, we always lie to ourselves. Yeah. If we lie to somebody else, we lie to <laughs> ourselves and God the first time. The um, truth is true. It's easy to fool ourselves and his other people, apparently. And it's easy to try to fool people. <laughs> but, um, no, you're right, and I'm proud that the Methodist Church does advertise open communion because I think that's the way Christ really would want it. I, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, the Catholic Church is a lot more ritualized than, than we are, which is one reason that the Protestants broke away because they didn't like some of the rituals. But a lot of the Protestant churches don't have open communion. If you're not a member of the church, you're, you're asked not to participate. Um, to me, I think Paul probably wouldn't like that. Um, if you think about it, I think he would probably criticize that. Um, but you know we're not here to judge what other churches do. We're here to learn that if we want to judge anybody, we need to judge ourselves first, um, and we need to be inclusive of others. That's a word that's used back to death in today's society to be inclusive, um, to the point where it don't even make any sense anymore. But I think a better thing is to be welcoming. Um, to anybody who is kind enough to come in our doors and want to sit down and maybe worship with us. And, you know, it's all about worshiping. It's not about having a big feast to see how much you can eat and how much you can drink. Um, we do that when we have, used to have our state suckers. We see how much we could eat and drink. Um, I did anyway. Um, but the whole idea of communion and communion, you know, you got the root of that word, community, commune, um, common. A communion is a common getting together and sharing the fact that Christ came here to earth and sacrificed himself for us. Um, you know, that's why we have the mention of the blood that was shed, the body that was broken. And remember, communion means together. Um, as a group, not as this bunch, that bunch, that bunch. Um, communion means together. Um, that's what community means, together. Um, you know, a lot of places don't have a sense of community that you used to have. We don't have it as much as we used to because there's a lot of folks in our community that I don't know who they are, don't know where they came from. Um, but it's our duty to make them feel like they're welcome to be there as long as they don't, you know, cut up, tear up, you know, have a log in there every day. 
But when they, if they were to come to church, we're supposed to welcome them. Um, in all cases, no matter who they are, what they look like. Um, these Corinthians were not doing that. They were making some people feel privileged and some feeling feel unwelcome. And that just, um, it went all over Paul like a nest of hornets. He just couldn't stand it. Um, so he used some pretty hard words to these people. Um, he probably used hard words to all of us if he was here today. But I think the thing to remember is communion means common. Common means together. Um, that's what the root word of it means. Um, and that's about all I can say about this. We got to talk about eating again next week, so I can't use up all my um, all my food thoughts and references. And I don't, I don't know. I ain't figured out quite yet why we own so much about eating and communion and stuff. This author must love to eat. Maybe it may be that, but it's got something to do with the liturgical calendar, and I've never understood all that. Because this is Christ King Sunday, which is kind of the beginning of getting ready for the Advent season to start, and you know maybe the idea of communion and togetherness is related to that. It's a lot of that's over my head, and I try to read, study, and understand. But you read one thing and it brings a question, you gotta go look up something else, then you gotta go look up something else. You get in a circle, I do. I get in a circle and don't ever get back out of it. Um, but You're talking about being in front of the church and people speaking. In the choir, I could not get out to speak to strangers that, that were here. You can't. You cannot you get can, out. You just can't get out Unless you drop, go running. Out the door, you like, like, with yeah. the road and everything. Yeah. It don't stop you no get an idea. But since I've been sitting back, if we have a visitor, I always try to get to them before they can get out the mm -hmm. door. Now, if I go to a different church, I'm sorry, but those people that are going to speak to me whether they want to or you not. You're going to make them That's just tough. <laughs> I do. I go and speak to them. And I know I've been to a church where they play bells. And I couldn't wait to get in front after we'd go up there to speak to the director and speak to the bell players. I didn't know who none of them were. But you had something in common with them. But I had something in common and to thank them and all this. So I think a lot of times you've got to make yourself available. Because, I mean, if I see somebody over there that looks like they're so grumpy and all, and a visiting church when I'm visiting, I'm going to go over and speak to them. It's just, as Johnny says, I'm almost the last one to leave every visiting church, just yeah. like I do at home. Uh, but everybody don't have the talk, the, I won't say the gift of talking, because I don't have a gift or not. <laughs> but to talk. but who, who wants to speak to people? I'm a people person. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of us was raised to keep quiet. Especially here at church, you just don't. And so, you know, you, you don't go home good or hard. Um, mm -hmm. We don't, anyway. But we've always been kind of conservative. But, and some people leave up quick. Uh, oh, yes, they so do. So if you up toward the front, or like you said, in the choir, you ain't going to catch them. They're gone. Uh -huh. And some, sometimes it'd be somebody here that I hadn't seen in a long time, hadn't been to church in a long time. And that's what I miss about us not being able to go out and greet yeah. Great and neat because you could run. Yeah. I'm going oh. like that sometimes. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. now, especially, are kind of afraid for anybody to come up to. Them. Yeah. And they want to keep the distance. And like I'm like you, there's a lot of time I see somebody, I want to ask them about somebody in the family or, you know, mm -hmm. something, hadn't seen them in a while, and they get gone before you can catch up yeah. to them. So, I mean, you got to work at it. But I think we're fortunate in one way ended. We all still sort of a community church. Everybody pretty much we, we know back you. Yeah, we, we know back you. Yeah, we're, we're local. local. <laughs> yeah. Local locals. And um and I think all churches need to be welcoming because all churches is complaining about the membership and the attendance is down. 
So we don't want to run nobody out of being here. Well, we all worship the same God. We all, that's we right. We're all supposed to be in the same gap. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we need to remember, is we all in it together. And if somebody wants to come to your church, well, they might turn out to be a valuable member of your mm -hmm. church if you don't run them off. Yeah, um, Greg, the guy who bought in Clarence Place, what's his name? I got to look. Uh, Jacob Jake, Jake, Jacob. Jake, I got to remember his name. Mm -hmm. He was over in the sanctuary when I carried the stuff in today. And I made a special point to say good morning to him. Good to see you here. Yeah. And we owe him thanks for his. He worked hard on it, boss. He, he did. He did. I mean, he... He looks to me like he's going to be a good asset. He was he was there every time he could be there. Now, he was there for Methodist men yeah. this morning, too, wasn't he? He's, he's going to be some st steaks for the members. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Me and Spooks get them next month. Uh, January 3rd, I believe, or 9th, something like that. Uh -huh. He's furnished some steaks and garlic for them. Cook them in uh -huh. more of a furnace every time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so I'm going to have to go to the shelter. Because I can't afford to buy a steak. I told him I had to buy extra one. Yeah. Leo was crying. I said, you got to cry. Oh, yeah, he'll eat one. Yeah. He said, you're going to spend the night with him at night. Yeah. 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 I went in Bay Pond the other evening, got some chicken breasts. And I just kind of looked at the, um, the other stuff, and I told the guy, I can't think of his name that works back there. I said, I can't buy none of chicken. He said, I ain't bought no red meat. No, I don't uh, um, yeah, we're going to shut it down for the day. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for listening. And we'll be back next week and let them know how.